These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Uh, by the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service also at my website. I wanted to mention a couple of the resources that are available at my website. Uh, at my website, at this address, again, um, you will find a listing of all of the recorded tutoring sessions that I've made available. And the sessions that are on similar topics are listed at that website in suggested viewing order. Also at the website, um, you can find links to printable documents that are helpful to have in front of you while you're watching the videos. For example, uh, in some of the tutoring sessions, I've distributed handouts <coughs> to the students, and oftentimes I refer to those handouts frequently during the session, so it will be helpful if you have a copy of the handout in front of you while you're watching the session. Also, uh, sometimes when we've been uh, solving problems in the session, instead of putting the problem on the board uh, to save space and time, uh, I just put it into that printable document. And again, you can find those printable documents with the problems that we solved during the tutoring session uh, at my website. So again, uh, before you start watching any series of videos for a recorded session, it's always a good idea to go to my website and check if there's any supporting documents so that you can have those handouts or the actual problems in front of you while you're watching the session. Here again is the address of my website and the easiest way to get to there is to use the link in the info box. Also in the info box you will find a table of contents for this particular series of videos as well as a link to a playlist containing all the videos in this series. The easiest way to watch a multi-part series of videos like this one is to click that link for the playlist. Uh, and then uh, if you like the playlist we'll just present all the videos to you in order. Uh, but also at that link you will find uh, a listing of all the videos of this series in order so that you can jump ahead to a particular video if that's what you want to do. Okay, so we went over this key uh, diagram. So let's review this diagram and we'll keep using this uh, today. Um, so we saw that we could, uh, let's consider that we have either a lens or a mirror here. This will work for either a lens or a mirror. Did we say this was the converging side or the diverging side? Converging. So if we have a converging device, we're going to use this part of the diagram. And if we have a diverging device, we'll use this part of the diagram. Okay. Um, so there's three cases for a converging device. Um, so uh, I don't know, I don't, uh, do you remember these? Or you could look them up, I guess, because you can use your cheat sheet. Uh, but do you remember what, what type of image would we get here? Uh, a real. Uh huh. Um, so inverted and then just shrunk. Real, inverted, and shrunk. Okay, good. And here? Um, that's also real, um, magnified, and inverted. So if you have a converging device and you put the object between the focal length and twice the focal length, you would get, get this type of image. And here? That's um, magnified, virtual, and upright. So if you have a converging device and you put the object within the focal length, it will be upright, the image will be upright, virtual, and magnified. All right, and how about if you have a diverging device? It would be a, a virtual, upright, and shrunk. Virtual, upright, and shrunk. It doesn't matter where you put the object for a diverging device. Diverging devices always give you upright, virtual, and shrunk images for any type of object distance. Okay, good. All right, looks like you have, did you memorize that? That's good. What were our uh, memory aids for that? Um, How do we know that these are real and these are virtual? Ronald Reagan by voters. Yeah, Ronald Reagan by <laughs> for voters. So focus on RRVV, Ronald Reagan by for voters. And then how do you know that these are inverted and these are upright? Uh, 
um, in infrared and ultraviolet. Yeah, so we also talked about how inverted images are always real, and upright images are all, always virtual, and you can focus on the initials as a memory aid, IR, infrared, and UV, ultraviolet. And how do we know that shrunk here, magnified, magnified, shrunk? Because um, the shrunks are on the side, and the magnified is middle. So again, we focus on the initials. So the two M's are in the middle of the diagram, and the two S's are on the side. So S for side, and M for middle. Excellent. OK, very good. So we're going to keep wanting to refer to this as we go through uh, the problems. So uh, let me come up with a problem. So let's say I have a converging device, and I put the object over here. What type of image will we get? A real. And trunk? Trunk. Yeah, and inverted. Yeah. Now, let's say that I stick with the converging device, um, and I move the object over here, between twice the focal length and the focal length. Does it get bigger or smaller? Bigger. OK. So in general, if we have a converging device, as we move in this direction, what happens to the object size? I'm sorry, to the image size. It gets larger. That gets larger, even if you don't go all the way to the magnified region. So this also shows you the general direction of change. This is something we didn't talk about last time, but it can be useful for exam problems. Um, so you can kind of see what's kind of the biggest, what, what, what point would you put the object to get the biggest image? Um, in between the lens and the focal point. Over here? Yeah. Now, let's think about that a little bit more. Uh, you think about the symmetry here. Um, uh, so uh, let's see. Um, so let's say we, we moved from here to here. The image would shrink. Uh, no, 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 no. It would, mag it would right. enlarge, right? Now, the image here would still be smaller than the object, because we're still in the shrunken region. The image here would still be smaller than the object. But this image, if the object is here, it'll have an image that's bigger than, the Im than, the, than what's here. As we keep going in this direction, the image gets bigger and bigger. Uh, so let's actually focus on, say, here. Logically speaking, if we put the object here, what size would the image be? Um, if we put the object the, here, sorry? The object, like the image, what size would the image be? Yeah, would compared be, to the object. Um, would it be the same? Looks like you worked out the logic. OK, that's right. Now, we know that if we put the object here, the image will be shrunk. And we know if we put the object here, the image will be magnified. So if we put it right here, we're right on the borderline between shrunk and magnified. Well, if you're right on the borderline between shrunk and magnified, that means that it's neither shrunk nor magnified. That means that the image is the same size as the object. So that would give you an image that's the same size as the object. So what would its magnification be if it's the same size as the object? One. Right. Positive one or negative one? Positive one. Now, is it going to be inverted or upright there? It's going to be. Uh, if we put the object here, would the image be upright or inverted? Inverted. Because we're definitely in the inverted yeah. region over here. We're now we're close to the upright version over here. Uh, we're on the border between shrunk and magnified, but we're not in the border between in, uh, uh, inverted and upright. So if you put the object over here, um, we're definitely going to be inverted. Well, what's the magnification when something's inverted, positive or negative? Negative. So technically, the magnification here would be negative one. We talked last time about how when the magnification is negative, something is inverted. When the magnification is positive, something is upright. And if, uh, if, uh, if the magnification is bigger in magnitude than one, it would be magnified. And if the magnification is smaller in absolute value than one, it would be shrunk. But the absolute value of the, uh, the magnification could be equal to 1, and then it's the same size. So absolute value of 1 means same side, negative means inverted. All right, so this is useful to know. When is the image the same size as the object? When we put the object at twice the focal length over here uh, for a converging device. And again, remember that this works for both lenses and mirrors. Uh, either a converging lens or mirror, if we put the uh, object here, it will be between shrunk and magnified. So that's some extra information we didn't talk about last time for the table. OK. Now remember, as we were moving in this direction, we were uh, magnifying more and more. So as we move this way, we're going to continue magnifying until we get to here. This is kind of the center of the magnification region. So if you think about it, once we start moving in this direction, now we're moving towards the shrinking region. right? Once we're here, we're moving towards the shrinking region over here. This is kind of artificial because, of course, in real life, you couldn't pass from one side you couldn't pass from one side of the device to the other side of the device. But if we use the table as kind of a thinking device, 
that that's the advantage of putting all these things on one table, that it helps us to see that we're when we're moving in this direction in the table, we're moving towards the shrinking region on the table. So when are objects at their biggest? Right here, when we've gone as kind of far, uh, when we're just in the middle of the magnification region. In fact, technically, there is no image here, because technically, at this point, the magnification is infinite. At this point, you would have infinite magnification. 